Mount Pilchuck is still snowy and often shrouded in clouds in early summer, and it's a challenge that can easily be underestimated. It's snowy, it's rocky, and uh, it's really technical climbing area. It's not something for someone who is inexperienced or ill-equipped. The tragedy brought two families together this week. They waited and worried with each other, and this afternoon they flew together over the site where their loved ones were lost. But this afternoon, word came that two bodies had been found in a steep, rugged, snow-filled ravine. The wait was over, the hope was gone, and there were finally answers about what happened. Slip, fall. There's no trail right in that area. Uh, we probably got off the trail and slipped. Sunday was a gorgeous day at Glacier Peak in the Cascades. And when you reach the 10,000-foot summit, it's not unusual to want to slide down parts of the mountain you've just conquered. Veteran climbers know it's hazardous, but experience doesn't always ease temptation. Now, Steve Studley says it was plain old dumb. On the way down, he hit a 200-foot section of ice. And then I began to tumble at that point. And I, was, well, I began to go, I just went out of control. And I, I just thought to myself that uh, as I was falling, that I, I remember saying to myself that uh, I'm, I'm going to die. But Sunday was a gorgeous and lucky day in the mountains. A medical technician and surgeon saw the fall and went to his aid. With a severely broken leg, he couldn't be moved. It would have taken hours for someone to descend and call for search and rescue. But Studley made a life-saving ham radio call. We saw a kid flip over on the inner tube, and then he just disappeared when the inner tube was flipping around. This other boy came, and he tried to get him, but then he went underwater, and he came back one more, one more time, but then he never came back up again. Fire and rescue crews from Snohomish County and Monroe began a search for a 16-year-old boy along the riverbanks, while the county search and rescue helicopter traveled up and down the river for an aerial view. Inner tubes were recovered on the river, but it wasn't certain if one of them belonged to the missing youth. His four companions, who got out of the water safely, were transported by aid car from the scene. Snohomish County, we go from sea level, salt water, frontage, up to uh, over 10,000 feet in altitude on top of uh, Glacier Peak. We have everything in between. We have uh, a good stretch of the Cascade Mountains running through the eastern part of the county. We have a large population base nearby that has ready access to it. We have people out of that population that aren't really prepared to go back into it. Tremendous variance of terrain and that easy access that people can get into it so easily and get themselves into trouble.
done as much to foster the goodwill and the pride that we have in search and rescue as anyone. He's the type of search manager that wants to hear other opinions, who listens to you, who will make decisions based on the best information that you can provide them. He has a tremendous amount of experience. He's a hell of a horse trader. <laughs> and it's good to have one of those around when you have a tight budget. Uh, he's always out there willing to give 100%. And I've just been real glad that I've been privileged to know him and be associated and work out in the field with him. We have had as many as five missions going on at the exact same time. So uh, uh, one year we did uh, somewhere around 130 rescue missions. Uh, averages out around 60 to 80 missions uh, for a given year. One of the situations that people get into quite readily is they find themselves in real hazardous terrain and they're only a few minutes walk from their vehicle. Uh, this could consist of uh, snow fields such as the Big Four Ice Caves area. It's a one mile real nice trail to the ice caves and then they go beyond what they can handle or what their expertise is. Um, they'll get on a snow field in tennis shoes and uh, lose their footing and go roaring off down the snow field and crash into the rocks becoming a, an injured person that we need to rescue. Or they might find themselves climbing a rock cliff with no skills at all and get to a point where they can't go up or down then we have to go rescue them. Mount Pilchuck is a very popular uh, recreational area. Uh, hundreds of people probably literally thousands of people uh, go to the summit of Mount Pilchuck every year. Uh, some of them lose the trail uh, because of uh, not being attentive to the, you know, the trail as they went up and things look different coming down and then we have to mount a search looking for them. Uh, Wallace Falls has been a, we seems like every year have at least one or two missions at Wallace Falls. Uh, people will go beyond uh, the time limit uh, that allows them enough light to get back out of the area and uh, that's usually the problem there. We have had people go off the falls. Uh, there's signs and railings and the people ignore them and go beyond them and we have problems there. Uh, Glacier Peak that's over 10,500 feet in the eastern part of Snohomish County is a real draw for avid mountain climbers. Uh, quite a few people climb it every year. They uh, are usually well equipped and well trained but these ac accidents just plain happen at times and uh, when we have to do a rescue or search on Glacier Peak we're talking about uh, maybe 12 miles just to get to the search area or the rescue area, so our helicopters have come into play in that role and uh, they've made the difference between people living and dying. In regards to the uh, rescue of Mr. Studley on Glacier Peak, it was a rather unique situation uh, because of the way we got the word that he was injured. Uh, he had available in his pack a portable ham radio which he was able to make communications with uh, a ham operator in Canada who radioed down to Seattle, who phone called the Snohomish County uh, dispatch to request for Snohomish County search and rescue assets. We responded with the helicopter's response team. We were able to get above the overcast that was in the local area and find where the injured man was on, on Glacier Peak, which is quite a big mountain. We made a, a very nice, safe landing at the 8,200 foot level, which is about the limits of the helicopter we were operating. Uh, we were able to evacuate him by helicopter, and we were able to get him to the hospital within hours of uh, him being injured. 
that might have otherwise taken days had we not been able to fly in and, do, and evacuate him that way. It landed, you know, 100 yards away from me on a, on a mountain, 8,000 feet up in a wilderness area. Uh, actually, 8,100 feet up is where it landed. Um, it was kind of like, like a miracle. And here it was three hours later after my fall. You know, you hear of these guys that take these falls all the time, and they look for them for several days. They splinted me, they put me in a basket, took me across a very steep, we were still on a very steep, they had never moved me from where I fell. Um, we were on a very steep, exposed snowbank. They'd take me just a few steps at a time and, and then they'd all stop and they'd be very sure that they all had footing and they, there was six of them working me across very, very slowly. And this took a long time to get me the 100, 150 yards to a helicopter. The feelings I have towards the crew are like, you guys are incredible. You know, you, you landed on the side of a mountain for me, you know, uh, it's just unbelievable. I just have a great deal of respect and gratitude and, you know, you, you know, name it. I just, you, you can't begin to thank people like that. You just, I mean, you just can't begin to thank them. You don't, what do you do? You just you say thank you a million times. stretch river has 
numerous boulders, white, roaring white water, and we've just been faced with many accidents in the past that if the people had been wearing the protective equipment, uh, they wouldn't have died. Uh, I've seen individuals uh, on rafts or something of that nature where it's just roaring white water and the individual was not wearing a life jacket and when I question them, they assure me that they're excellent swimmers and uh, swimming doesn't even come into play in that type of an environment. Uh, the rivers uh, all flow into Puget Sound and uh, the mud flats, the tidal areas in the, around the Stanwood area uh, present us with a real problem of uh, duck hunters going out, the tide going out, and then they're not able to get back. Uh, uh, sometimes they have small children with them. The extreme cold conditions prevail and they sit out there for hours probably not prepared like they should and then we have to try and find them and then rescue them. One of the most recent uh, rescues that uh, we accomplished was uh, Megan Weatherholt. Uh, we got a report from Chelan County that there was a young lady that had a probable dislocated shoulder up in the area of Indian Pass. Uh, she was on a horse that had stumbled and slammed her against a tree, uh, dislocating her shoulder, and this was the day before we got word of the mission, we were able to fly direct from Snohomish right to the Indian Pass, from Indian Pass right to the hospital. When that helicopter, every time the wind would blow, we'd think, oh, they're, they're, they're coming now, they're coming. And finally, when we, it, it was that rhythmic rotary motor thumping, and, and we could identify that it was a helicopter, and then that the helicopter was bright orange, and it was coming our direction. That was a pretty good feeling, and there was a tree line and a small frozen snow-covered pond right there, and they landed right there and took me off to Everett General Hospital. They approached me in a very professional manner, and having been an EMT and a trainer with the ski patrol at Stevens Pass, I. Um, can very much appreciate their effort from the time they arrived till the time that they were no longer with me in a room in the emergency room at <laughs> Everett General. They they made sure nothing else could happen to me, and I, that meant an awful lot. I felt a real good continuity of care there, and I mean they were just really great. Greg, Paul, Jim. Tom, John, thank you very much, and I hope that your program continues because this is really important, and I don't care whether you land in a wilderness area anywhere. This is important stuff. <laughs>